Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man Army of Turan. Uh, we are beating the game on the highest difficulty with only two soldiers per mission. If you have uh, been following uh, this uh, long, long playthrough, uh, you are probably as excited as I am to finally go into the last mission. We do have the Commander's Avatar, uh, which is uh, probably the closest to Psy, uh, Psy uh, Warrior. We do have a pretty beefed and buffed up Roby, a specialist with um, all of the skills plus some more. And uh, we do have uh, Hogbite, the VIP or the MVP of uh, this run, a Templar uh, with immense powers. So those uh, three are now going to explore a bit more what uh, this first mission here has in stock. And I can already see that this is going to be a pl pretty much a slugfest for the FPS. Look at that, couple of berserks, nice. Come here, come here. Um, like I said, uh, we are trying to uh, preserve our, uh, our abilities, so you're going to see me very much uh, highly carefully using our, um, um, our um, consumables and our uh, one-time abilities. But what you're also going to see is I am quite easily going to use uh, long-term uh, long buffs, uh, long-term uh, cooldowns. So I am not afraid to use those. By the way, uh, incredibly nice crit to uh, start off the mission. So that was good. Uh, which will probably result in us actually killing this uh, Berserk right off the gate. There we go. Just moving over here. Little bit of softening him up. Yeah, we're not going to use any of our abilities here. Just standard shots, and that's pretty much about it. The Berserk is not even <clears throat> going to reach us. I should increase the sound volume, uh, volume a little bit. There we go. It's just running next to us. That's pretty much it. There's a lot of alien activity happening. But for now, we're going to keep it nice and steady. 31 um, enemies. Uh, it's going to be probably around 10, -ish, 10 or so packs. The Berserk pack was just uh, the mild beginning. Wow. Well, that's probably the only way of actually hurting him without hurting some of our um, of our uh, other operatives. We're going to get the focus level up for um, Hawkbite here. He's now at two focus, um, giving him just a little bit more power. I do not want to explore any further. Instead, we're parrying. Good enough for now. Reload Overwatch and reload plus overwatch again good enough for now it's 
So the reason why I'm going slow and steady is we're going to bank a lot on long-term cooldowns such as rapid fires, such as uh, mm, uh, such as the um, lightning hands, such as run and gun, and we'll really uh, you uh, try to beat the encounters with those abilities primarily. I would want to get uh, the third uh, focus if possible, so that's why Hogbite is progressing a little bit further. So is the commander and Roby. I'm, I'm trusting you here. With all of uh, the enemies um, on this map, almost seems like uh, the CPU is always or, uh, or the um, the random access memory, as always, is uh, being highly uh, utilized. It will get better uh, once we have uh, once we um, clear most of the map. So two down, thirty one, which means twenty nine to go. We don't want to drop the ball here on the last mission, so it's going to be a safe and steady run. Probably we'll use the full cover here next. Can see that there is a sector port somewhere uh, around the area because we have seen the ground shaking. Let's use the commander again to see if we can spot something out. The answer is no. I'm curious to see if we actually get 100% uh, dodge chance or if it soft caps at some level. We're, we're definitely going to have a chance of seeing that in the second half of the map because the ghost uh, of the Templar will have the exact same stats as the Templar, meaning it'll, uh, it'll hopefully have uh, up to 100 dodge. So let's see if that's going to work out. Long, long enemy movement. Come on. Very nice. Okay, so Hogbite. Hogbite simply moving over here. Let's see if we are going to spot someone out. Massive frame drops. And we definitely have found something or someone. Oh, nice. All right. Not too bad. Let's just start. But I think we're going to start with a dimensional rift. Nice. That's a very, very solid start. We do have a 100% chance to mind control him. I think this year is the limited mind control. Um, it is not the one-time permanent mind control. So 
might as well go for it even though we have damaged it uh, quite a bit uh, the gatekeeper I think it's worthwhile having it as a scout and there we go just triggered a few more units it's fine All right, time for some Reaper Momentum. First and foremost, uh, let's soften this guy up. Good job, well done. I think we're not going to go with him first because he's kind of our um, get out of uh, get out of their card. So this here is going to be the starter. Should kill the first chrysalid. It actually kills both of the chrysalids. Not too bad. Double Reaper. Wait a second. Double Reaper? So you are telling me if I were to shoot this one here, it wouldn't end my turn? I think that's what the game is telling me. We do not have Implaceable. So pretty much uh, sounds like that. Good. It's interesting to see how Reaper um, interacts together with the uh, rent ability that clearly um, can kill multiple targets at, at once. So you're getting one action unit back per killed unit. If you kill multiples, you even get more units, uh, more action units back. So same thing here again. We got three times Reaper. Oh my god, oh, it's going to be fun. Wait, just out of curiosity. I don't know. Maybe that's too ballsy. Is it? Is it not? Is it? Is it not? I don't know. I mean, it would be f it would be a fun move. Okay, here's the deal. Let me have some fun. Just a little bit. Um. This here is 100% kill, so we don't need to worry about it. And if worst comes to worst, if worst comes to worst, uh, we would actually still have uh, still get out of it quite quite okay because we can transfer uh, an action unit over. So we're moving over here. By the way, uh, still got a shit ton of uh, units uh, of action movement actions left over. 75%. So he still has two action units left over. Um, which, by the way, if we were to Iconic Storm here, that would completely obliterate all of uh, them. Uh, but it would also make us vulnerable. Although, I mean... Would it make us vulnerable? Yeah, hmm, you never know. You know, one thing that we could do is we could already move here and see if that triggers another, uh, another pack. It doesn't. So if we were to
Uh, now we can't hit all of them. That is... That is a pity. You can't Iconic Storm just, uh, like, literally where you're standing. But maybe there is another uh, space where we could hit all of them. No, no. We could hit three out of four. There was one. Uh, there was uh, only one space where we could hit four out of four, and we unfortunately blocked that one. Okay, learn something new. Um, I mean, we still have uh, the option, to be honest, uh, to kind of play it like this. Wait a second. We still have Reaper for what it's worth. So this here. It's continuing with our onslaught. It's not at the iconic storm. I think we've just pulled another pack, by the way. No, we haven't. Okay. Thanks to their melee vulnerability, even later in the uh, in the Reaper, I'll say actual damage is already pretty low. We're still dealing quite a bit of damage. Alright, so let's give Hogbite here. Nice little aid protocol for some extra shots if need be. A little bit of a threat assessment. Overwatch. The only reason why I'm pulling back is because I don't want to stand in the open. Nice little extra damage. Gatekeeper is disoriented. Well, it is what it is, dear Gatekeeper. So we're moving. I think we're going to keep the gatekeeper for two more rounds after this, so might as well make the most out of it. The commander theoretically can take some hits, so it's fine to put him there. There would be an explosion. He could take it. Hogbite will just stand next to the Gatekeeper, uh, just in case the Gatekeeper decides to turn um, on us. Uh, that would prompt an Overwatch and um, and a Bladestorm, which would uh, probably kill him, uh, make him explode. Uh, we are immune to explosions uh, with uh, Hogbite, so he wouldn't take any damage, and the Commander would heal the damage, so... That's actually fine. The... the um, disorientation should not last any longer. Well, I was wrong. 
One further learning, uh, mind control units apparently do not benefit uh, from the from uh, the resistance orders, which makes sense. So it does not lose its uh, status effects just after uh, just after the first round. Probably going to have one more round after uh, this. Moving Hogbite into here, just so he again uh, makes sure that everything's okay with the gatekeeper. The commander can be moved to here. And Roby uh, can uh, double move and still get his overwatch, thanks uh, to Ever Vigilant. So we're actually making uh, far more uh, progress in terms of speed than expected. Everyone's on Overwatch. Uh, if the Gatekeeper decides to lose mind control, it'll be an easy uh, kill for us. So we started with two, that was a pack of four, that's six, uh, I think over six chrysalids, that's 12, and a gatekeeper, that's 13 out of uh, 31. Opening the shell. Moving with the shell. Again, opening the shell. And again, moving with the shell. <laughs> okay. Well, sucks being you, gatekeeper. Sucks being you. Okay, let me think. Let me think. Gatekeeper is most likely going to act in some shape or form. The gatekeeper is really the only one that could see us at the moment. So, I am wondering. If we can just null lens the living hell out of this creature and go home. Oh, a vault wouldn't be bad either. Okay, so the commander could actually move up to here. Uh, 
I think we're pretty much fine with a friendly fire. That's the whole idea behind it. Nine points of damage. It's a good start. Probably could have amplified him. That wouldn't have been the worst decision. If we were to vault, that would not hit him. Okay. Let me see, I don't want to end up in the open. Don't want to end up in the open, and I don't want to use any consumable abilities, so... It really might be as simple as putting an aid protocol out there for threat assessment. Going on to overwatch ourselves. Taking a shot at the gatekeeper. And even if that misses, we're still fine, I think. Yeah, it had missed. And just vaulting the rest here. Interestingly enough, it still stays mind controlled. The gatekeeper was killed. Oh. I got it, right? It's a pretty solid uh, Overwatch. Okay, we can't go in uh, simply killing everything uh, with a melee attack, but uh, we certainly can go in and uh, kill everything with a dimensional rift. And I guess that's two down already. We do not have Reaper anymore. So we got to be a little bit more careful. Hmm, I mean, yeah, we, we could uh, get this guy, but why would we? Um, matter of fact, almost all of the things that we could do will make our situation worse and not better. We're moving up here.
This guy upstairs could theoretically come down and actually hit us. So it's not the worst idea to go in and hit him back. We're most likely not going to kill him, but we're severely injuring him, which is going to be one shot range for the Overwatch afterwards. There we go, we're back to full um, to full strength, maximum focus. Certainly could do capacitor discharge, but I don't want to do that. We need it for the final fight. Instead, we are going to reload plus overwatch, which is good enough. We're in full cover, so I don't mind that at all. And we are going to... Um, move back to this position here. We're not uh, clustered up, so we should be fine. That's one kill. Overwatching, which is a pretty stupid idea to begin with. This here is now burning. Untouchable, baby. Untouchable. Let's finish uh, this guy here. Overwatch removed. It's only a 70% chance. which is only due to his uh, full cover, which I certainly can't uh, accept. So we're going to invert his position, making him way more hittable. And see, that's already a 90% chance. That's how I like it. Good job. Problem solved. And we are I'm going to parry this guy. Our tank is doing exactly what our tank is supposed to do, manipulating the battlefield and uh, standing in the front line, parrying all of the nice little attacks from the enemy. So that was another pack of... We were at, 80, uh, at 13. No, wait a second. We were at... No, we were at 13. Six chrysalids, four, that's ten, one, and two, yeah, thirteen. That's another six plus uh, two. So we are looking um, at eight. Uh, so 30, uh, 21 out of 31 are down after this fight here. He didn't even need to block. Let's get our focus back. So 
So this adds up to three focus. Very nice. Moving into cover. Reload. So we're looking at Overwatch, Overwatch. So far, the mission plays out more easy than I would have expected. Even the packs with like six, seven, eight um, within them seem to be reasonably easy. And with a really, really high movement rate of everyone, it's it's getting comparably um, compar uh, comparably um, easy to uh, position ourselves correctly. Good. Overwatch, Overwatch, and Overwatch. Okay, I think by getting upstairs, we have a very high chance of uh, finding the last few packs. Normally, uh, when playing this map, you could almost rest assured that there is one or two packs uh, right behind uh, the next building. Usually the gatekeeper is last, but in this case they might have positioned a sector pod and a couple of advents uh, right there. It's kind of the only sort of enemies that we were missing. Maybe a codex um, and a spectre. Okay, so apparently we haven't found anyone so far, which is good. Commander comes into his direction and uh, Roby has even a shorter uh, way up there. Yeah, that's the next pack. I was almost I was almost expecting that that would be the case. It almost uh, it also seems just from the radio signals that the pack is really close to the border here the edge. Can't find them. Let's just get a little bit closer. Okay, 
we know that they are down there, which is good. So we're going to use that next turn. Reload Overwatch. Well, not exactly as I would have expected it. By the way, what a phenomenal pack. I think this here should still be way out of range. Nice. That's a good dimensional rift. I think we can go with one. Now nah, we're not going with a scanning protocol. I need um, the eight protocol in order to protect the commander over here, but also give him uh, threat assessment. were to use a uh, volt that would probably kill every single one of them with the exception of this one guy over here one good hit and we might even be in leather range for him Instead, we are overwatching again. Let's not use anything other than cooldowns. They have two actions this time. We have discovered them in their turn. But two actions still shouldn't be enough to completely spot us out. We have really, really solid positions here. The commander kind of over here in full cover seems to be a good bait. <laughs> yeah, specifically if we're running into lots and lots and lots and lots of mechs, that's going to be an issue.
Can he hit? No, he can't. Okay, well, I mean, that's, an, that's a problem, clearly. Mainly because their uh, rockets still could hurt us quite a bit. It's only a 50-50 chance to take it over. And there is still a sector port, by the way, uh, back there. Where to go in? We could uh, we could work with uh, Reaper. We're going to pull another pack, but that's sort of okay. So how do we want to do our entrance? I mean, we could just run in. That's one option. We know there had been another pack over here. See right here. So if I were to go to here, I could still uh, we still ki uh, could still kill him by moving to here. Um, That'll give us a blade storm attack because we're triggering this pack, um, and it'll we'll we'll get some free hits out of it, which not, which is not the worst idea. Eh, almost. Of course, they all bypassed us without um, triggering anything. But that's uh, that's it. Uh, sometimes one, uh, sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. Or certainly, uh, the sector port is a problem as well. There are a lot of problems here. Can I? No, I can't. Okay, good. Which means... You know what? That's not the worst. 11 to 12, so that's 10 to 11 the next time. And... No, that wouldn't be enough. So we're, we need to start uh, with this robot here. Basically injuring the other one already. That's a kill. You will pay the price. One down. That's Reaper time. That's a two and three down. So we're killing the Andromedon as part of this attack. I was almost sure that we would kill it. We're not.
Moving into a better position. I'm, I'm trusting you here. It's time to play aggressive. That's not an automatic kill. This here is. So let's clean up the ones that are 100% kills. It's one down. That's two down. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that would work. But it'll require a softening up first. Um, it's 8 to 11. How much damage is uh, this here going to do? Eight. Uh, would be solid 8 points of damage, so that's 13 hit points left over. Not enough to actually kill him. That's a problem. Okay, um, the Jixi puzzle is a bit more complex than expected. Let me try to solve it. We can kill those here with an AoE attack. Still trying to make sure we're not wasting any pre uh, precious shots. So this guy here will not do anything. Um, the mech up here is a bit problematic. Uh, but I don't have a solution for it at the moment. We can certainly kill this one, not a problem. Yeah, and I think we need to actually do this here. There we go. So if we were to hit into this direction, it wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Might as well hit from here. This world is ours. If we were to go for an iconic storm, sort of curiosity that would kill both of them and we could definitely also finish him the archon de uh, would be unchecked the archon would be unchecked Mm. 
Question is, what are we going to do with the Mac up there? We can still move back. We do have an untouchable here. So if we were to kill those guys here, we could still finish with a rapid fire. Basically on the Mac. And pretty conveniently kill it. That wouldn't be an issue. Sector port definitely would be a problem, but the sector port is a problem regardless. We can't, uh, we can't uh, check him. This is automatic damage. Uh, with him, we do have reflects, and the sector port effectively needs to walk up. Uh, we also have a touchable. The sector port cannot just explode it. So uh, this here is a priority over the sector port. This guy here can't do anything. Um, if we were to continue with the play, which I think is the right one. Um, we would Iconic Storm to get those uh, guys down. Uh, would get two of our focus back, which is a pretty solid um, amount of focus. And would effectively then stand down here, exposed to an Archon, a Shell. Um, an Archon and a Shell, this guy here would die. We could maybe do a little trick. And almost, no, we can't. I was about to say and almost just go right next to him, but that's not going to work out. The reason why I wanted to do that is uh, because uh, then we would need to fully kill him. As soon as he does something, we would have Bladestorm. Bladestorm would finish him. And that, would, that wouldn't that would be the worst, uh, um, the worst idea. But that's unfortunately not possible. So we're going to go with the Iconic Storm. Alright, come on. Nice. Two focus, very solid. Going to kill this guy here. And let's get the heavy mech down. Maybe we're even getting a hair trigger, but that would be probably asking for too much. Nice, there's a reflect. Good job, good job. A little bit of fuck you right into his face. Now this is going to be an issue, because clearly uh, first uh, shot will be untouchable. Second one, however, is not blocked. Maybe Wrath Cannon, if we're lucky. Yep, we're lucky. It's a nice little blade storm. So we're only looking in uh, at one attack. Which if you... Ah, that might even hit. Yes, no, maybe? Oh, he messed that one up. Interesting. Okay. That was unexpected, to say the least.
One of the tactics that we could do is effectively move uh, behind the commander, let the commander be hit because he's regenerating and that wouldn't cost us anything. Not the nicest thing to do, but certainly pretty effective. Moving back into a better position, run and gun, for reload, into a rupture, which uh, should pretty much set this guy up for substantial additional damage. So that worked out uh, pretty well. The armor is tough. I don't mind the explosions, to be honest. Matter of fact, we're immune to it. So might as well finish him with a melee attack. All right, we're going to put a parry on, which means the Archon is most likely going to, yeah, melee attack us, uh, not knowing that there is a parry. Uh, or just uh, trying to go for us and instead panicking which is hilarious. The suit seems to be completely disorganized, doesn't know what to do. And that was a fun encounter. Only three packs are needed to make it a bit more challenging. Roby gives themselves an aid protocol. Good, let's shortly move in and finish this here. We missed Overwatch. He's still panicked. Couple more misses. Reload. And take a shot. Oh, okay. So this guy is somewhat floating up there. Very strange. Good. This is it, guys. This is it. We successfully um, finished the first part and are now 
being forced to fight the final fight. We haven't used any, I repeat, any of our uh, consumables. We haven't taken any damage. It went all according to plan. And now it is time for the very, very final fight. It was a good mission. Uh, I'm excited for the next mission. In three days you're going to see uh, how and if the campaign is going to end. I thank you for the ongoing support and I think uh, this mission here deserved a thumbs up. Uh, uh, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next week. Goodbye.